in some of our adult Sumatras. Now, what we're planning on doing for you guys this afternoon is um, just a basic toy session. Dave's brought a few uh, toys in with him from home today, and he's going to bring them out on display and have a run around and a play, and see if we can get a little bit of activity out of the cats. Now, as with any of our training, our behavioural work, our toy sessions, it's all very, very low pressure and low key. Um, we're not a circus here. We don't believe in making the animals perform as such. It's just a matter of uh, encouraging a little bit of fun and having them enjoy themselves. Okay, now, tigers are very similar to your domestic cats at home, not to look at, but in their behaviour. Uh, they do like to chase things around. Anything that makes a bit of noise or moves very quickly, they tend to get very interested in. So we'll see if we can get a little bit of activity out of them. Now, unlike your domestic cats at home, uh, or most domestic cats at home, tigers absolutely love the water. Okay, now, it shouldn't be too hard once the cats are up and active and moving around and heating up to actually encourage them to go into the pool and have a bit of a swim and a splash around. So we'll see how Dave does. Now, as I said before, we're not going to pressure uh, them too much. If they would rather just sit back and relax and watch, that's quite all right. And if they do want to get involved, guys, we want you guys out there to get involved as well. So give us a big clap and a cheer if you see something you enjoy. Maybe one of the cats jumps in the pool or maybe one of the cats jumps on Dave. Anything like that at all, we can hear you in here. We know you're enjoying the presentation. Dave can hear you and know that he's doing a great job. And also, obviously, also the Tigers can hear you uh, as well. Now, the first toy that Dave's brought out is just a, a couple of blow-up beach balls, little ones on the end of a pole. And you can see Caitlin already is very interested. She's going into stalk mode. Have a look at that. Ears back, head right down. Probably from out the front there, you can hardly see her at all. Maybe just the top of her head and her eyes. Now he's hiding that behind the tree. What he's going to try and do when she jumps over is maybe get her to climb that pole. So we'll see how we go. There we go. Oh. That's, a see how that's, a That's pretty good. And then she's stuck down. <laughs> she is. Now our tigers have all of their teeth and claws. There's proof there that they have all of their claws. And you'll find we don't believe in removing them as some places around the world do when they work with their cats. It's just a matter of training, conditioning the animals, obviously, to make sure they behave themselves when we're interacting with them. Now, they're not allowed to play too rough, they're not allowed to scratch us too hard or at all, and they're not allowed to bite us too hard either. Now, it looks like Dave's brought up one of uh, Charlie's favourite toys out, just a couple of balloons, and they've got a little bit of water in them. And Charlie absolutely loves to burst them, so we'll chuck a few in the pool, see if we get him in, for instance. Oh, Caitlin's all over it. <laughs> there you go, guys. Like I said, tigers are not afraid of the water at all. All right, Charlie, what do you think, mate? I think he wants it, he just doesn't want to go in the pool and get it. Now they use the water, especially when it's hot to cool off. You quite often see them sitting in the shallows of the pool here. Just trying to uh, keep their body temperature down. Big jump from Charlie. Oh, that's a goner. That's a goner. <laughs> uh, and also when we're interacting like this, they definitely enjoy splashing around having lots of fun as well. Now, you find that um, once the caps do get wet, Obviously they start to cool down when they get a lot cooler, that's when they tend to get a lot more active. Now also they tend to get a little bit goofy from time to time as well, a little bit worked up and excited. We do expect that, they are tigers, we know exactly what we're dealing with here. So you'll find that playing with them or interacting with them at any time is obviously a pretty dangerous thing to do. When you add water to that equation it becomes a lot more dangerous. So it's one of the last things you do when you start working with our tigers here at the zoo. And it could take anywhere up to two or three years before you start interacting with some of our juveniles. Could be five or six years when you start doing it with some of our adult tigers. All right, big fella in the pool. Well, Dave's doing a lot of jumping around. Watch your back. Now you'll find that uh, when we're interacting with the cats, it's obviously important to make sure that we keep a very close eye on them. So that's basically everybody's job out here today. Um, apart from me talking on the microphone, the two boys are out here with us, just watching Dave's back, so they'll let him know if the cats are sneaking up behind him or if one's watching him with more intent than, than Dave would be comfortable with. Because usually the cat you're playing with isn't really the one you have to worry about too much. You'll find that um, all your attention is on that tiger and they know it. It's the one that's hiding on the back behind the tree, stalking you from uh, the back of the exhibit you really have to be careful of. Because what happens is they come running down, they want to jump on top of you as well. We do encourage the cats to jump on us and take hits from time to time. But obviously we have to make sure we're paying attention. The last thing Dave wants is Charlie at 135 kilos to jump on him and knock him over without him paying attention. Now, as I said before, the toys we use are pretty simple and usually pretty cheap if we can help it. You know, we've got just a little bit of a float here on the end of a pole as well. And as I said, they're very, very effective as you can see. The cats, all they want to do is just chase things and run around and play. 
And you'll find that uh, the more expensive the things we use, obviously it costs them a lot of money to start with, but generally the caps don't seem to get into as much. It's usually the cheap things like a plastic bag on the end of a stick that the Tigers absolutely love playing with. Now, we, uh, we quite often celebrate the cats' birthday every year, and we bring them presents and cakes and things like that in, they absolutely love it. And uh, previously, we've spent a lot of time and effort buying toys, wrapping them in boxes with uh, wrapping paper on the outside, bring them out for the Tigers, and what they tend to do is spend two minutes unwrapping the presents, tearing them open, and then the toys inside sit on the ground out of the way, and the cats spend the next hour and a half playing with the empty boxes and empty wrapping paper. Okay, so as I said, it's uh, something we've learned along the way is not to worry about putting any uh, actual toys or presents in the boxes, just give them the boxes, wrap the paper on, they have uh, enough fun with those by themselves. Now what Dave's doing is trying to encourage Charlie here to get a bit excited over this toy down the bottom. And then uh, perhaps we'll see if he wants to come up and maybe do a big jump for us in the pool. Now, we've seen some of our cats actually run and jump from the side here. You can actually see them over that black bar at the top there. So they jump two and a half metres or so in the air, and they land about half a metre past that pillar. So they're jumping about four to five metres in a single bound. So absolutely massive. And, and those are some of our younger tigers. So you imagine what some of the more athletic adult cats can actually do as well. All right, here we go. No pressure, mate. Big jump from the side. Not too bad at all. So we're getting some really good activity today, which is excellent to see, guys. I said sometimes the cats prefer just to sit back and watch, and uh, when you're playing, you tend to run around like an idiot for an hour, and uh, all the cats want to do is just sit there and look at you. How's that? So that's definitely proof that uh, tigers are not afraid of the water at all. That little cat on there, we found definitely loves diving for different things off the bottom and picking them up. Same with our sister Maneki. Some of the other tigers don't do it as much. Charlie here doesn't tend to go into water as much. But uh, that's just, uh, I suppose, their different personalities coming into play. Now, we hand raise all of our tigers. The first time we saw these cats, they're only a couple of weeks of age. They're about probably one and a half to two kilos in weight. And um, obviously, you have to build up a very strong bond and relationship to be able to work with them. Okay, so for the first four months of their life, we're with them every single day, all through the night as well. So we stay over at night time. We actually have facilities built here at our tiger temple at the back here where we can actually spend nights with the cats. Obviously, they have to be fed every couple of hours. I suppose it's just like raising a baby of your own, uh, making sure that, um, that they do get fed regularly. And obviously, having that uh, relationship is pretty crucial to be able to work closely with them like this. And we're going to see if we can get the big fella here to jump in the pool here in a sec. Now, Mark's got a balloon. Kayla knows that he's got it. You know, so she's uh, all over him. Dave's just trying to distract her so Charlie gets a chance to actually jump in. Now the boys are going to swap. That's the way, see? They have smarted. Alright, so Caitlin over here, Charlie over there. Now, as you probably know, never works out the way you want it to. <laughs> so did you guys hear that bark just before? You heard Charlie barking? Probably heard him over the, uh, the top of the window there. Um, tigers, obviously, as I said, are still wild animals. And they uh, definitely do sometimes uh, get on each other's nerves, so they tell each other off. We do expect them to, uh, to behave like that. They bark and roar. They can show signs of possessiveness over toys or aggression even. And it's obviously up to us to read those situations and uh, basically keep out of the way pretty well. Okay? Now even though, as I said, we do have that strong relationship, um, we're under no delusions of grandeur. We know exactly what tigers or these tigers are capable of. We see it every day. We don't think we're invincible. We don't think we can stand up to them. In fact, Charlie here, being the size and weight that he is already, could quite easily drag all four of us around behind him on the end of a rope if you wanted to, okay? So he's definitely a lot stronger than we are. Um, he can run